Hey there YouTube, what's going on? This is Desmond with another video again today. And we'll be talking about the gospel and campalism. Now, you guys know on this channel, we've been talking about the Campbellite Church of Christ for quite some time now, uh, especially with our brother uh, Paul Day, who was a former um, uh, Church of Christ preacher. Um, there is a, a militant Church of Christ uh, guy who comes on our channel and comments quite often, and his name is CAC, uh, and, and it's followed by a series of numbers. And I asked him a question about what is the gospel, and ironically, he could not actually answer that question. But instead, he gives us a second steps to get to salvation as opposed to the actual gospel message. So I take that he didn't understand the question that I posed him, which is also very concerning. If you look at how other Christians throughout history have uh, articulated the gospel from the time of the apostles up to now, it's always been the exact same message. But this one guy... He could not articulate that same message. What he gave to us was responses to the gospel rather than the gospel message itself. So I'm going to show some of the comments here and also uh, we'll listen to some of the um, uh, apostles, the church fathers and such. Give the articulation of the gospel. We'll start with the apostles, of course, and then move on down. It's not, it's not going to be too long. Just give a couple of um, ancient examples and some modern examples as well to show how that message has not changed. And also just want to bring in some of my concerns about the Church of Christ in relation to uh, the gospel message. So before we begin, please like, comment, and subscribe, and tell us what you think. Do you guys understand what the gospel message is? How would you articulate the gospel message? Without further ado, let's begin. And truly, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 30 to 31. The scriptures declare to us what we must believe to be saved, and it is the same message echoed by the early Christians all the way up to the modern era. That Jesus, the Son of God, was sent by God to, to a sinful world to die on the cross for people who did not love him, but rather he loved them. After doing so, he was buried in a tomb and rose again on the third day, defeating sin and death. And all those who believe on him will partake in that eternal life. If we put our faith in him, we will inherit this life promised by God to the faithful. However, sadly, many people refuse to believe the simple but yet powerful message of salvation and reconciliation provided to us by the Father through His Son and guaranteed by the Holy Spirit. Campbellites, otherwise known as the Church of Christ, claim to be the original church which we see proclaimed by Christ and established in Acts. However, according to them, the gospel message is not enough to be saved. The gospel message is not the power of God unto salvation for all those who believe. The gospel of the camp of light is bondage, not freedom. Here are some of the statements from early Christians on the gospel and what saves us. Notice that the Campbellite gospel is never articulated by them or the apostles. Clement of Rome. And we too, being called by his will in Christ Jesus, are not justified by ourselves, nor by our own wisdom or understanding or godliness, or works which we have wrought in holiness of heart, but by that faith through which, from the beginning, Almighty God has justified all men, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Clement, First Epistle to the Corinthians, 
32.4. Epistle to Diognetus. He gave his own son as a ransom for us, the Holy One for transgressors, the Blameless One for the wicked, the Righteous One for the unrighteous, the Incorruptible One for the corruptible, the Immortal One for them that are mortal. For what other thing was capable of covering our sins than his righteousness? By what other one was it possible that we, the wicked and ungodly, could be justified than by the only Son of God? O oh, sweet exchange! O oh, unsearchable operation! O oh, benefits surpassing all expectations! That the wickedness of many should be hid in a single righteous one, and that the righteousness of one should justify many transgressors! The Epistle to Diognetus, chapter 9, verses 2 to 5. Justin Martyr speaks of those who repented, and who no longer were purified by the blood of goats and of sheep, or by the ashes of a heifer, or by the offerings of fine flour, but by faith through the blood of Christ and through his death. Justin Dialogue with Trypho 13. Basil of Caesarea. Let him who boasts boast in the Lord, that Christ has been made by God for us righteousness, wisdom, justification, redemption. This is perfect and pure boasting in God, when one is not proud on account of his own righteousness, but knows that he is indeed unworthy of the true righteousness, and is justified solely by faith in Christ. Basil Homily on Humility, 20.3 Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Now you heard some of the scriptures compared with that of some of the early Christians that followed thereafter. The emphasis was always in believing in the name of the Son of God, which was Jesus Christ. Now we're going to listen to a little bit of the Campbellites and their staircase to heaven, I like to say. And we're going to see the difference there where they add in different conditions to get to heaven. We didn't hear that from the scriptures. We didn't hear that from the early Christians. So let's think about what they're talking about and look at the scriptures that they use. So let's first listen to the Campbellite, and then after that, we'll go into the scriptures and see how they get to this conclusion. With that. So I believe that salvation and unearnable. A man can do nothing to merit his salvation. Now listen to what he just said there. A man is unable to merit his own salvation. However, there is the big but right there. He is about to explain to you how you are able to attain salvation through various conditions that you have to meet. In other words, you have to work for your salvation. Listen to this. But uh, there are conditions to salvation, okay? Uh, one of those conditions would be, would be faith, a belief in what it is. Also, one would have to then, uh, after he believes, acknowledge that he has repent of that sin, which is a change of mind followed by a change of action. Now, listen to what he just said there. The first part was correct. Metanoia or repent, means a change of mind. But then he also talks about a change of action, which is where the works falls in. So it's not simply trusting in Jesus. As uh, Jesus told uh, his disciples, you must just believe on me. This is the work of God. But rather, it goes into you changing who you are as a person. You, the sinner, has to stop sinning in order for you to be saved now. So if you were a smoker, if you are an adulterer, if you were lying, if you are doing this or that, you have to stop sinning before redemption is able to be possible. This here, my friends, is work salvation. And it is something that God tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 8 through 9, that none of our works are for salvation it's purely by faith that we attain the grace of god in christ okay and so the works follow after you've been saved by christ if you look at verse 10 ephesians chapter 2 verse 10 tells us that we were created uh in christ jesus for good works the sinner is not for good works he cannot please god whatsoever that's isaiah chapter 6 4, verse uh, 4 to 6. however the christian can do good works 
because the Holy Spirit has transformed them and of course he indwells that believer. He is covered by the blood of Christ. So again, my friends, here is where the work salvation comes in. Remember he just said earlier, you can't merit your salvation, but then he tells you, you have to do works. In other words, you have to uh, turn away from your sins, which is impossible without the power of Christ, which we're about to get into right now, just to give some more uh, explanation. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, Certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. The Epistle to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. For the Christian, we can overcome sin because we are in Christ. The act of repentance, or sanctification, is both an initial and lifelong process. When we repent, we do what Christ says to Paul in Acts chapter 26, verse 18, to open their eyes in order to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. The Campbellite's gospel requires one to turn away from sin before having the power to do so by God himself. No matter how hard we try, to do so outside of God is impossible, and that is where we fall into the problem of presenting our filthy rags of so-called righteousness, referencing the prophet Isaiah before God and expecting him to be pleased. Thus, there is no true freedom from sin, but a trust in one's own righteousness rather than the righteous and completed work of Christ for one's own salvation. Consider this passage as well. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So how is it that a man, who has not been saved by God, does the things God asked without his aid? Again, any reference to any work of sanctification applies to the Christian, not the unsaved. He would then have to confess his confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God, that he is then immersed into water for the remission of his sins, and then that is when he is put into a redemptive state into Christ. So let's just recap just a little bit. We heard what he said. The first part was actually correct. What he said, you have to have faith in Christ. You have to have faith in the gospel, right? Um, but then he goes into repentance. Now, the first part about repentance is correct. It's a change of mind. Uh, however, the second part is sanctification. And he's putting that before so actual salvation. And then he talks about you have to confess that Jesus is the Son of God, which unless you are of God, you're not actually going to be able to say that, you know, genuinely anyway. And then, of course, you are baptized in water in order to get into the redemptive state in Christ, which we already know, if you're not already been redeemed by Christ, that means you're still enslaved to sin, according to Romans chapter 6, and there's no way for you to actually get out of sin, which means you can't actually do the parts of sanctification because you're not free from sin. So it's a, it's a contradiction to Scripture itself based on what we've read. Now, again, this is the Campbellites versus the actual Scripture here. Um, now, where you get the confession, you know, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, as you guys may already know, you look at Romans chapter 10, and it tells us those very things that, you know, uh, you uh, believe in your heart and you confess your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved, right? And so they believe that if you, the words, you have to, that has to utterly, you know, actually come out your mouth in order for you to be saved. And we'll get into that into another video as well, but it's important for us to know that where they require these works, 
in order for salvation. But as we have seen, the most consistent thing in Scripture we've all seen is that believe, believe, believe. Believe in Jesus, the Son of God. Believe his gospel and you shall be saved. The things that he mentioned are responses to uh, being saved, right? So when I've been saved, I confess Jesus as Lord. You know, uh, I get baptized. I do all these things once I have been saved. Because I've been changed. My nature has been changed. And I want to turn to the things of God. I no longer want to do the things of the world. That is what biblical repentance actually is. And then once I get into a redemptive state, that's when I'm able to carry out those acts of repentance or sanctification, I like to say. Um, so, yeah, when we get into this, the gospel message is very easy. We're going to, we're going to play uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1-4, through 4, which tells us what the gospel actually is by which we are actually saved. And if we believe that message, we are good to go, right? Um, but again, the Campbellite does not agree with that message. They, Of course, they will say, well, we agree with that. We, we believe that you know, it's by grace that we have been saved. Let me also mention this about Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, because they like to get on us when it comes to when we say faith alone, grace alone, Christ alone. Let me ask the question. Are we saved by anything besides God's grace? Anything outside of God's grace that we're saved by? Okay. Is there any other way we can access that grace other than faith? No, because you know Paul makes it very clear. You don't access that grace by anything but faith. Works are excluded. Are we saved in any other name besides the name of Christ, the name of Jesus Christ? No, we are not. We're only saved by grace. We're only uh, uh, we only access that grace by faith, and we only attain all that in Christ alone. This is the reason why we add those words alone, so that way people can't try to add little things into that. We try to make that make that emphasis because that's the same emphasis Paul was making. But you know, when we're talk, speaking in English vernacular. We make that emphasis. It's only by grace, access only by faith, and in Christ alone. Unless you guys have, you know, can't believe there's another God that we can access this through. They would also say Christ alone. They would also say grace alone. They would also say uh, uh, through faith alone. So it's, it's, it's concerning to me that they don't have the correct gospel. And this is the reason why we would say they aren't saved. Uh, for the rest of us, we do believe baptism is necessary, but not for salvation is part of being uh, sanctified in Christ. Again, John chapter 14, verse 15, it says, If you love me, you obey what I command. If we love Christ, we will obey the things that Christ commands us. Now, let me ask you a question. Do sinners love God? Think about that for a moment. Do sinners love God? And if they do love God, what does Jesus say? If you love me, you will obey what I command. So if you are a sinner outside of the grace of God here, right? You don't think about God. You don't uh, practice what he tells you to do. Do you love God then? According to John chapter 14, verse 15, you do not. So the question is again, how can you do the things of God when you don't even love him? The only way you can love God is when you've been redeemed by God. And the only way you can be redeemed by God is by believing that gospel message. OK, and the only way you can actually like be truly repentant of sin, right, is by God working in you. But again, you have to have faith in him. It's not by your works that these things are able to happen. The Campbellite gospel puts your works ahead of God's works. And that is completely incorrect. We are created in Christ Jesus, being, being born again, in other words. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And this is a question a lot of camp lights like to ask. How do you obey the gospel? And they overcomplicate this question because if you look at the Greek, for example, it's very easy. And it's talking about attending to, listening to, obeying. And you look at the context to see how does that fit. And if we're talking about obey the gospel, the question is, and this is kind of like repurposing the question, how do you obey a promise? Well, how do you obey good news? That's what the gospel stands for. The gospel is good news that Christ had died on the cross for our sins and he rose again on the third day, defeating sin and death. How do you obey that? You don't. You know, you have to believe it. That's the only way you can actually do that. So logically speaking, you can't actually obey the gospel in the sense that they're thinking obey means. You have to go back to the original Greek, which talks about listening or hearing to or hearkening on to. Um, so again, it's talking about believing the gospel. You hear that message, believe it. 
You hear what Christ has done for us, believe in that. Put your trust in what he has done for you. Not just a, a heightened intellectual ascent on what Christ has done, but rather you're putting your whole life on a line for this. This is like, Christ, I trust you. I know you did this. I, 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 I trust you to you know, take over. Um, it's, it's not a hard thing, but again, camp lights, they have to overcomplicate this. And, you know, if you just read the simple gospel message, which we'll also play at the end, it's here as well, um, given by, you know what, we're going to play the one given by Peter. And just ask the question, how do you obey this? You obey by believing. Now, with all that being said, guys, I just want to uh, let you guys know I'm, I am back. I'm making content again. Um, took a little time off whatnot because I've been working a lot, <laughs> both on my job, personal life, and then, of course, uh, making this documentary as well on Sean's uh, Kingdom and Context cult. Uh, please stay tuned for that. Still working on that, most likely towards the end of the year. And I will still be releasing content on uh, that particular cult as well. But guys, make sure you study your Bibles. Make sure you're adhering to what God has called us to do. And please, please keep these camp lights and other cults in prayer. You know, we want to see people come out of these groups. We want to see people come to the light of God. We want to see people become saved. And I look forward to having more and more conversations with those who are within the so-called Church of Christ, which we all know as campalism. And I also want to thank all the new subscribers for coming in and uh, commenting and showing their love. It's been really great. <laughs> you know, I'm a small channel, so it's, just, it's been nice to see that influx. Um, and I, I just, just the encouragement has been really good. So I, I really appreciate you guys. And again, more is still coming. I'm still learning this animation stuff, so I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. But other than that, guys, you guys have a good night. Take care. These are the words of Peter to Cornelius and his household. The gospel is being presented to them, which they believed thereafter. The Book of Acts Chapter 10, verses 36 to 43 The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. To him all the prophets witness that, through his name, Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. That word you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him God raised up on the third day, and showed him openly, not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people, and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name Whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. As Peter says, if you believe in him, you will receive the remission of sins. Forgiveness is for one and all if you believe in the name of Jesus. Will you do that today? Paul says this. Note the summary of what Peter spoke. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preached to you which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast that word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Please, if you haven't, trust in the Gospel message and you will be saved, becoming a member of the true Church of Christ at this very moment. It is not by works that you are saved, not by your many prayers, water baptism, studies, intellect, or anything. It is only in Christ and His finished work that we find our rest. If you are new here, welcome to the Knights of God channel. Hit that subscribe button, comment on our video, and share it if you feel this is helpful for others to understand. God bless all of the brethren and sisters 